Hey darlings, just a really quick overview today of compound sentences. All right, so, oh, you can go away, there we go. Um, we want to use a compound sentence when you want to give equal emphasis to two main clauses, okay? So that means you've got two sentences you want to put together. It only works to use a compound sentence when those two sentences should have equal weight, when they should equally be emphasized in your paper or in that par part of your paragraph. Um, go ahead and make sure you've written that down. The pattern for coordination looks like this. So first we have our main clause, right? And we'll go over what exactly a main clause is in a moment. Then you've got your comma, super important. A coordinating conjunction comes next. You have to have one of those. We'll go over those in a moment as well. And then you end again with a main clause. So that's the pattern we should see. Main clause, comma, coordinating conjunction, main clause. You do not, do not, do not, do not put a comma after the coordinating conjunction. Please make sure you don't do that, okay? Let's cover what the coordinating conjunctions are. You do have to know these, so now is a good time to make sure you do. Uh, the coordinating conjunctions are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Now, fanboys is a great way to remember them. You can remember that mnemonic device, fanboys, you can remember what those letters stand for. It'll help you remember what the coordinating conjunctions are. So every time we use a coordinating conjunction, it doesn't make a compound sentence. That's part of why we're doing this today. So this is just a review, like I said, but make sure you've gotten these written down. You can pause if you need to. And then what's a main clause? A main clause is the same thing as an independent clause, a simple sentence, or anything that contains a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought, okay? So those are all the same thing. Main clause is the same as an independent clause, is the same as a simple sentence, and they always contain a subject and a verb and express a complete thought. So let's take a look down here at these two sentences, okay? So I have my subjects, green, and my verbs, or predicates really, yellow, right? I have the whole predicate here and the whole subject. So the dog ran, subject the dog, verb ran, expresses a complete thought. That's a main clause. This second sentence is also a main clause, even though it's a lot longer. So keep that in mind. The purple spotted puppy is the subject. Race through the dense underbrush is the predicate or, you know, raced being the verb here. So that's what I mean by a main clause. Now, here's a bunch of sentences, and let's take a look at what we've got. I have CJ, right? So that's my subject. Thanks, CJ, for starring in my, my film. I appreciate it. The supreme athlete loves playing softball, but here is my coordinating conjunction would never take ballet. I know this isn't a compound sentence because it has a coordinating conjunction, but my coordinating conjunction doesn't have a subject and a verb on both sides. It only has one subject for the whole thing, okay? And that's what you have to remember, and that's what I'm seeing people make mistakes with. Some of you are putting a comma before this but when you don't need to have one, okay? Same thing happens here. To their credit, JT and Broom always say yes ma'am to their teachers, okay? So here, again, I don't need a comma with this and because this is a, what we call a compound subject. Here I have a compound predicate. So my coordinating conjunction is still compounding things, but not in a compound sentence, so it doesn't get a comma, all right? Moving to the next one. Newton refused to smile about having to use noodle tools. And she wrote a long essay explaining why. I know this is a compound sentence because it has a subject and a verb before the coordinating conjunction and a subject and a verb after the coordinating conjunction. And both of them express complete thoughts, okay? Again, it has to express a complete thought in order to be a main clause or an independent clause or a, a simple sentence, okay? So I have to have a comma here. And our last example, the seventh graders look up to, want to be like, and emulate the eighth graders, okay? I have commas before my and here, whoops, which should be pink, sorry, uh, but only because I have a series. This is a list, one, two, three things that the seventh graders do, right? 
So this is another kind of compound predicate where there are three verbs with one subject, okay? The whole point of this, the reason we're going through it, is because I want you to find these coordinating conjunctions in your paper, okay? And you're gonna make sure that you've punctuated all of them correctly. First of all, on the back of your paper, you're gonna write one compound sentence for each coordinating conjunction, and that's gonna get turned in. So on the back of the notes you've just taken, where you have your name and how long this has taken you, you're gonna write a total of seven sentences. It won't kill you, you will be fine, I promise. Make them make sense, but they're welcome to be funny, entertaining, I love it, okay? Then you're gonna go through your paper and you're gonna find and mark all of your coordinating conjunctions. Anytime you see one of these seven words, you are going to mark it. Choose, do you wanna give it a star? Do you wanna circle it? Do you wanna highlight it? Are you gonna box it? Pick something, make a key at the top, okay? Find and mark all the coordinating conjunctions and then check and see. Is this a compound subject or a compound predicate that shouldn't have a comma? Is this a series that has to have commas? Is this a compound sentence that must have a comma? Okay, that is the entire assignment. Make sure that you have at least two compound sentences in your paper, all right? You will have to mark them on the final draft. Best of luck, ask if you have questions.